Hi everyone, it's Margaret Manning here and welcome to Mornings with 60 and Me. I hope that your day is off to a great start. Um, it's very sunny and bright here where I am and looking forward to a, to a beautiful day. Um, this um, Mornings with 60 and Me, by the way, is really designed for you. It's to get everyone together in the morning with a cup of tea or coffee to really um, just kind of get together on what's going on in the world and for me to share with you some of the stories that I think are important to our women, to our demographic. And um, I encourage you to leave comments in the section below you know, this is this is a place for you to share your thoughts and and feedback and uh, have a conversation. So feel free to com comment on any of the things that we talk about in this in this um, session. So uh, what's going on in the world? First of all, I think I need a cup of tea. This world is just too crazy today. <laughs> today I am drinking um, lemon ginger. It's really cool, and I love this mug, don't you? It's really cool. It's not my psychedelic days. <laughs> Anyway, what are you drinking for tea this morning? Um, so, you know, the day is off to a good start, but the world is, is all kinds of challenges. In the UK, for um, example, the Brexit uh, fallout is still continuing. Uh, the uh, chairman of the Bank of in England uh, spoke yesterday about the business impact to Brexit and uh, some of the commercial impacts in, uh, in London. In the United States, uh, there's a constant flow of, of um, information today about the elections, about um, uh, issues related to social problems, and uh, you know just kind of the complexities of life in a place like the United States. But um, the other thing, of course, in Asia, which you may not be aware of, is that they're having a huge amount of flooding in uh, China, and uh, you know whole t streets and towns are being uh, severely impacted. H hundreds of people are homeless, and there's a huge amount of damage being done. So. You know, the world in all of its areas, and we have women in every single country almost in the world, I think 150, um, is, is impacted in one way or the other by this news. So, um, you know, I, I want to drill down a little bit on a couple of topics, though, that I think are of interest to us as older women. So the first thing, I found an article in Huffington Post. It's actually by Carol Merak, who is one of our bloggers on 60 and Me. Um, it's also, this article is also in the New US um, News and World Report. And it's really talking about the um, uh, the amazing growth of boomer uh, boomers in our in the cities in the United States particularly, and about how, um, you know, by the year 2050, there's going to be over 80 million people over 65. So it's, a, it's a, becoming a real challenge for cities who are, whose infrastructure um, investments are focused on you know roads and streets and homeless people and um, community issues things that are really important but they don't specifically address the aging population um, there's a of course all the challenges that um, elderly people face around housing and medic medical um, issues networking you know being able to have a sense of community and also of course um, loneliness and social isolation so all these things in the cities are going to be impacting the infrastructure of um, cities even more in the future and of course the, the point that Carol makes and the, the US News World Report makes is that there are so many people now in over 60 living alone in cities in America around the world too. And you know, for example, in uh, I think it's in Florida and in uh, Texas, um, you know, almost 800,000 people are, are single, excuse me, are seniors, and 70% are women. So there's 70% of that huge number of seniors living alone in Florida and Texas. In California, there's about 31% of the population is over 65. And again, they, you know, a large percentage live alone. So I think that it's really important that we, um, you know, we, we are aware of this issue, that we do what we can on a local level to make sure that there are investments being made for housing, for um, you know, transportation, medical um, help, things that you know, really are going to to help not just the elderly community, but the whole city and the and the um, community at large. Uh, there are some cities that are leading the way, and um, there's a little bit in this, I'll, I'll put a link to this um, article so you can read it, but it's about the um, cities like Denver that's building, um, um, uh, you know, and transport infrastructure that's really very helpful, um, San Diego and others. And of course, there are a lot of other cities, and I'd love to know what's going on in your, your towns and cities to, to prepare really for this uh, growing, aging community. That's us. So anyway, that's, I think, a really important story that I'd like to just highlight for us. 
Another one that's really close to my heart is a story I picked up yesterday on a, on a site called Recycling International. I actually am very passionate about sustainability and about um, you know simplicity and minimalism in our lives. And especially when I was in Bali, I really felt this to be the case that um, there are some places where the use of plastics, for example, is just overwhelming the um, the beauty of the land. And it, even in the United States and other you know more developed countries, um, people use plastic bottles without thinking too much about it. And um, this article was really interesting because it said that um, what is it something like if you're if anyone born after 1978 who lives to be 80 will have um, used or thrown away 14,000 plastic bottles in their life. It's a crazy amount. And there's so much that we can do to recycle uh, plastic, but also to use um, you know, bottles and other uh, refillable um, containers. But this article that, was, that intrigued me was about um, a group in Panama who are making houses with plastic bottles, with recycled plastic bottles. Go figure. I mean, this apparently it takes about 14,000 bottles to make a house, a small house. And um, according to the article, they're very safe. You know, they, they're, they're flexible, so they withstand winds and even um, tornadoes and hurricanes. They are, um, uh, well, the other thing about them, they, well, they neutralize this, the negative effects of um, uh, the, the, you know, the, the impact on the planet from the you know, toxins. It's very, very powerful what you can do with plastic bottles. So anyway, I think that um, really the conversation here is what do you do to um, simplify, reuse, recycle, uh, you know, redistribute your waste materials in your home, especially plastic. And I just kind of think it'd be interesting to live in a plastic home. Actually, I saw the picture of, of a house that's built from plastic bottles, and it's really pretty. <laughs> and the light shines off of it. It's just gorgeous to look at. It's not a, you know, what you'd expect. But anyway, another story, sustainability and how we, um, you know, we can do more um, as a community to, to help the world you know, save it from itself or save it from us actually. But anyway, that's another story. So finally, um, my feel good story is today, and I always love these celebration of days, today is World Kissing Day. Who would have thought? So kissing, you know, it's really amazing. We, we, it's a, one of these cultural things in some cities, um, some countries, you kiss twice on the cheeks in France, for example, when you greet in Switzerland, it's three times. You just, you know, just a little, little peck on each side of the cheek. And of course, in, in the United States are big huggers. So I think hugging and kissing kind of go together anyway, but today World Kissing Day. I think we should just go out and celebrate this one with all the passion that we can. <laughs> um, I guess, you know, kiss a friend, kiss your family, maybe kiss a stranger, but um, be careful. No, I just have, have a really great day celebrating World Kissing Day. And actually something to consider in this article that I just read is that two thirds of the people tilt their heads to the right while kissing. So I don't know, I, I never really thought about it, but um, anyway, that's the story with kissing. Celebrate World Kissing Day and enjoy this beautiful day on the planet. Um, if you've got any comments about any of these topics we've talked about today, just leave them in the section below. And my question for you, because it's just been kind of on my mind since I got up this morning is, what kind of tea do you like to drink? What, are you a, are you a tea person? Are you a coffee person? What's your morning drink? Let's share so we have some idea of what we have in common. Oh yes, I have one more thing to share. Um, I have, um, was digging through all of my treasures that I brought back from Bali and I found some little treasures that I want to share with our community. So today I would like to find a home for this little bag. Okay, so I'll hold it up. It's, just, it's made out of cotton. I loved these. They've got a little coin attached to the end, so the drawstring is quite strong. You could put makeup in here. You could put just your you know, little treasures. You can do all kinds of things with it. So I have got one of these that I would like to, to find a new home for. So, so just in the comments section below today, I will randomly choose someone's name. I, I promise I'll just be random. <laughs> and uh, tomorrow we'll announce who the winner is and I'll send this off in the mail to you. I actually love these. Um, I, I just think they're really, really unique and pretty. Okay, sweet. So have a wonderful day, everybody. I hope that um, whatever is happening in your life today brings you happiness and joy. And I look forward to talking to you all again tomorrow. Take good care, everyone. Bye-bye.